We are Steel Magnolias, two sisters who love family, traditions, and all things Southern. We've got plenty of room at our table, so pull up a chair. Does that sound like fireworks to anyone? No, not really. (laughs) Fourth of July. Here we are. We are. We're celebrating. Celebrating the independence. That's right. Freedoms. Breaking free of the (laughs) British oppression. Yes. Throw our tea in the... (laughs) I'm sorry. I'm getting all silly. It is special birth time of freedom for our nation, the 4th of July. It's a big deal, yeah. I remember my favorite 4th of July of all time was out in Leaper's Fork and the Campbell's property where we had many activities going on, but yeah. we read the Declaration of Independence. Oh my gosh, everybody over the fire. Had a section. It was it's really, really profound super cool so if you can young and old young and old and it just made you ponder yeah the really amazing words yeah in the document yeah um so maybe do that with your family this this week can we introduce ourselves as we celebrate no i'm lara beth i'm laney (laughs) welcome the steel magnolias (laughs) that I, i just you Started out with the fireworks. We're so. in a funny mood, mood today, but that's just how it is when you meet with somebody week to week. Isn't that's it? right. You get Some different weeks are sides. sillier than others. But yes, we. when you think 4th of July, don't you think of being outside? Sweating. <laughs> bug spray. <laughs> bug spray and <laughs> cornhole and just things you do outside, but... Potato cooking out. salad. Potato salad. Potato salad. So... Let's chat about it. There's all kinds of other things. I think a watermelon, too. Yes. The hamburgers, ribs, like yes. cooking at grilling. Yes. And Baked beans. Yes. <laughs> Which, by the way, is so good next to potato salad when it they is. touch when a little touch, bit. And you get a little. You can just scoop with one. <laughs> Especially if you've got a spork, like yes. a plastic spoon and fork. Okay. I guess our listeners that don't like their food to touch are <laughs> They've repulsed already right down. now. They're like, what is this podcast? Okay, so we're talking potato salad today in honor of all the things potluck that are happening in people's lives around the 4th of July. And last month in June, Huff Post, formerly Huffington Post, I didn't even know that. Didn't know it had changed. Post. Yeah, that's, been, that's how long it's been since <laughs> I read their publication. But they did a story where four chefs debated on the best potato salad. Fabulous. I want to hear that. And they all had varying opinions, and I'm going to go ahead and say I agree wholeheartedly with two, and I disagree wholeheartedly with two. Oh, I'm interested here, because I have my opinions on this. Okay, so the first chef uh, said his ideal salad is made with roasted potatoes that have been lightly seasoned with salt and pepper, and that adds a crisp texture to the dish. I'm fascinated. This sounds okay. really yummy. This, um, do you want me to tell which ones I agree with now? Should I go ahead and... Well, I've only boiled mine, so I'm so, already interested in this roasted. It sounds yeah. fabulous. Well, I said I can't imagine roasted potatoes in okay. a potato salad. I so can. I was like, eh, I think I'm out. The second guy said fingerling potatoes with uh-huh. a dash of bite to it. Okay. So he like was trying to spice it up. Well, I can't imagine fingerling potatoes. That sounds unusual. Potato I'm, salad. Well, I'm open to trying both it, of those two. I nixed because it was too like gourmet. Okay, to, for me, I'm like I'm try, potato salad needs to stay basic. in the category of basic home cooking, like mm-hmm. that can live on a picnic table. Okay, to me. Okay, yeah, it's fair, but I'm okay. So to try roasted now. Now, <laughs> <laughs> well, I will post the article in our show notes okay. if you want to actually look into where these chefs restaurants are. Okay. I'm pretty sure the first two were up north. But anyway, Uh-oh. number threes was a southerner. She boils her potatoes and adds lots of bacon flavor. So she is Chef Tamara Patterson of Chef Tam Underground Cafe in Memphis. Okay. And she's won different awards and um, she thinks her version is the best because not only is it made in honor of her grandmother, but it's loaded with bacon flavor. Well, I was just thinking, if you're putting bacon in anything, I'm already probably going to try it. Yeah, yeah. So she's out of Memphis. And then the fourth chef they talked to was out of Louisiana. 
Natasha Butler, and she's got cookbooks and she's an author. But her ideal potato salad has a hint of spice and creaminess. It comes cold with the right amount of mayo, creole, and yellow mustards, and the holy trinity, bell pepper, onions, and celery. Interesting. I just was very intrigued. She boils and makes hers with uh, Yukon gold potatoes. Yeah, I like that. With the skin on. Yep. And mixed with hard-boiled eggs. She gives it life with the Cajun pepper. Um, She uses liquid crab boil. Okay. I've never used that. And garlic powder, salt, dried parsley, thyme flakes. I mean. So this recipe to me sounds Practically exactly good. like what I would want to do, except we're not putting peppers in there. Okay, so you disagree with I, her I holy trinity, that. bell pepper, onions, and celery. I, I'm taking peppers out if I'm making it. Yeah. But I do like a mayonnaise and mustard together. Some so, people lean towards mayonnaise only. Some people lean towards mustard only. And And with that, kind of either cold or warm. Right? So, like, kind of cold mayo-based yeah. or, on the warmer side, mustard or even, like, a vinegar. Now, this base. is even funny because I'm thinking I actually like it kind of even not dramatically either. Right. But I'm going to go more refrigerated than I am hot. Yeah. Because salad's not supposed to be hot. It's not. To me, it's not. We're already hot. We're, We're outside hot. on the 4th of July. <laughs> and I don't want my mayonnaise stuff getting hot. True. It's, that even sounds like sickness could be I know. brewing. Yeah. But I do like that middle ground of mustard mayonnaise because I like both. I do too. But um, I'd, I'd love I to. I think the ger- is it the German potato salad that's more mustard? I can't remember. What do you think about like potato salad that's got kind of a crunch to it though? Or do now, you- I'm a texture. So I, I know. like this roasted that's why I'm asking. potato situation that yeah. I'm thinking of. But I don't want it hot, and I do want it to have both mayonnaise and mustard, but I might try something like that just to see. What about celery? I mean, celery's always going to have a crunch. Yeah. So no, that's okay. You would include that? And I don't, for me, I don't know if you know this about me. I think you do. I like crunchy celery. I don't like cooked celery. So if I'm making yeah. soup yeah, and it's calling for many things, I may not put the celery. Okay. Um, if if, if it needs it, like, that, you know. Because it doesn't add a, well, I was going to say it doesn't add a ton of flavor. It's a little. But it adds a certain flavor. Um, but I do like that crunch of celery. Yeah. So, I like, I like to eat it raw. Yeah. And I like it yeah. in a like, potato salad or and something And hard-boiled like eggs, for sure. Always, yeah. So, that's your soft and your hard to get. There's a yeah. lot of, like, contrast. Uh-huh. That happens. You've got a southern potato salad recipe well, there's you there's a love, couple that, I have a passion for southern living recipes being a safe place to go absolutely so there they have a southern potato salad recipe that is it is the you know boiled potatoes hard-boiled eggs that's almost a give to me a given yeah um the mayonnaise and the mustard but they also put onion celery pickle relish yum in there um and then you can put a half a pound of crumbled bacon. Yes. So, you know, I think that's just a wonderful yeah. addition. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're simpler potato salads than this one, you know, has, like I said, the celery, the onion, the relish, the bacon, the, um, you know, salt and pepper. But some of them are literally just the eggs, the um, mustard, mayonnaise. That's what my husband would like. Want. Just basic. He likes basic. Don't add all the yeah. herbs and yeah. things. Um, it's so hard to please everybody because you are making this for a crowd. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure. In fact, that was one of the reasons we wanted to talk about it is people are likely going to be going to something where you're asked to bring a dish. That's absolutely. Potluck style is very popular for yeah. Fourth of July. Yeah. So, somebody's probably going to bring potato salad, and yeah. so why not talk about it on yeah. that day? But, yeah, you're making it for more than just wonder if one. there's a good, um, like, happy medium where you could make a basic one like you were just talking about. Absolutely. But the, here's double the, the recipe. So, you've got two to offer. Mm-hmm. You've got your basic for all the plain Joes out there. But then you're like, and this one has celery and, you know... Relish. It would even be cute to tag it that way. Like, you know, 
would you say plain Joe? Plain Joe. Plain Joe potato salad yeah. and then have a cute name for the other one and yeah. just have the two bowls sitting yeah. side by side. And- or you could get really creative and play on founding father names. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Well, now I'm hungry for potato salad. Right? <laughs> Did we talk about everything it pairs well with? I don't know if we even mentioned well, that. Well, I, you, I just jokingly, when you were mentioning baked beans, I really do love that when my I touch and I get a little bit of both in the same bite. Yeah. I don't know why, yeah. but I love that. Yeah. Um, but gosh, potato salad, just like, you know, when you think of potatoes, they're next to a lot of yeah. things. Hamburg, grilled hamburgers and hot dogs. Yeah. There'll be a lot of that this Ribs, summer. Ribs, anything you're smoking, brisket. Yeah. You put some potato salad next to that. Pulled pork barbecue. You better believe it. And yeah. then, like you also said, watermelon. Yeah. So good when it's hot. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I'm kind of wanting some of that right now. I know. Too. We're making ourselves hungry. Well, another thing we wanted to talk about on this episode, since it is summer, summer, are just some cheap things to do in the South. I'm sure people are letting summer run its course, and maybe you've had a vacation, maybe you haven't, maybe you wish you'd had a vacation <laughs> and don't get to get away, but there's still a lot of fun things to do. that you can do that don't cost a lot of money, but you do have to plan or get a little creative. So we wanted to talk about some of those things. And um, give you some, stir some ideas. Yeah, things stir you up can some do. Things. So, one of the first things I'm going to mention is also sort of a nod back to our Southern Sodas episode. So, I have on my list that you can go for a day trip, even if it's just for a drive. So, even if you're not going country to, cruising, country cruising, that's a way better name. But part of the day trip or the drive needs to be to pick up some fun drinks at a gas station. Love it. So maybe you're starting out, you know, at a gas station that is in your town that you know has something fun. Or if you're wanting to be adventurous and just wait to see what the open road carries, pick up something fun. And if you're going to be real Southern, you can buy Coca-Cola and put some peanuts right in the glass I love bottle. This. And um, just enjoy. Do that drive. Enjoy drive. You can yeah. have a playlist. All right, of now. Southern music that you listen to. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just see what happens. So, that is, and be willing to pull over. I remember right. one day I saw some donkeys. I was with a, somebody in the car. We just pulled over and so they came right to the fence and it was so sweet. You know. So fun. Yes. When yeah. you're running errands and stuff, you don't have time to you do can't that. Take kind photos. Of stuff. Yeah, yeah, but just build in some time to stop too. That's yeah. a good idea. Yeah, so that's smell the just roses, gas, and uh, money for snacks and that drinks. Sounds so like a fun. That's that definitely something like a, you could do any day of the week. Adventure waiting to happen. Yeah. Well, uh, I have on my list to utilize your local library. Ooh, that's a good one. Because they have some, sometimes events, yeah. specific events. I looked at our local library, and they had, like, um, in the summertime, one of the events they had was Lego Day. Oh, that's cool. Where they literally have Legos all out for kids to build stuff. And I thought, huh, that sign me up for that, because I don't want them all over my floor. That's amazing. You don't have to be the one putting them all back in storage bins. <laughs> I thought that was fun and free and yeah so i don't know what your local library might have in your town but check the calendar and see that's a great idea and i would say even just doing some summer reading like i'm read a book together yeah and that can look a lot of different ways but i even think it's neat when families like will get a chapter book and literally read Read it together yeah um one chapter each night or something like that yeah um but you know whatever your family style is maybe you um shelly that lives across from us they do a morning i think hour or something where everybody's just reading their own book yes and on their porch you know, oh, like cool. you're not d- talking. Everybody's just sitting there together yeah. reading. Yeah. So I've heard of families trying to incorporate that in their nighttime routine too. Okay. Of okay, it's quiet reading time. You know, you don't have to read together. Just reading on your own. And and yeah. I've even seen people on um, social media that'll put a post out like, "What books have you read to?" Children together. ages eight to ten, yeah, or that kind of thing. That's and a people great give you idea. ideas of what worked for them, and that is good. 
So that's one of my recommendations. And audiobooks. Let's not forget oh, about that. I gotta believe those are great. I'm so old school. I had a friend this week that asked me, have you read any of, you know, I'll put a picture up of the Fanny Flagg book that I'm reading. She said, oh, have you been reading any audiobooks? I'm like, I forget the audiobooks <laughs> are even. Well, wow. I just, I'm in the midst. I think I'm chapter 20. Eight of thirty-eight of Jane Eyre. Ooh, so okay. I'm enjoying Jane Eyre right now, but I'm just audioing that. You know, audio booking yeah, that. One, yeah, so and those are available a lot of times through your library, your library. as well. Right, that's For why free. I wanted to mention like that. there is Audible where you can buy audio books, yeah. but there's also through your library you can listen for free. That's cool. I have on my list anything near water. So I love that. That is so you. It is. So that could be fishing, canoeing, swimming, or this is very southern. How about a rope swing? Oh, come on now. Right? I mean, safety first. Safety but first, but we've got a popular a, one in our county. If it's a place where it's been happening <laughs> for a while, maybe it's safe enough to, to join in. But That's yeah, awesome. anything near water. And if you don't want to get in. All right, just go put your toes in and maybe bring a book or, you know, just enjoy being by the water. But mm-hmm. there's plenty of stuff you can do in water at your... Where you don't have to be in a canoe or a kayak. Yeah. Like, just getting your feet in. Yeah. And it can be very refreshing. It can. And soothing. And, yeah. And free. <laughs> Well, uh, one of the ones I have on my list is sit outside and watch fireflies. Oh. I, they're out right now. They are. And they're just so fun to look at. And especially the further you are away from the city where yeah. it's darker. Yeah. Um, looking at the stars or fireflies is so fun to me. And there is something I'm going to mention. I think we need to talk at a later date uh, about because we've just missed it. But okay. Did you know that in the Great Smoky Mountains, it's one of the only places where there's synchronized fireflies? Do you know about this? No. Do tell. Never heard of this in my life. So, limited amount of time that this (gasps) happens. Okay. Um, It's a mating thing where the males... It's in this lighting signal and then the females, but they all, they get synchronized. And so there is a particular part of the Great Smoky Mountains in East Tennessee where people literally make the track to watch the synchronized fireflies. Wow. And, and you, so they know when you it's going to be. Get, they know when it's going to be and they, you can only get to it either by, um, like there's, I think they run trolleys where people can come in Stop. or you can camp. Oh, my gosh. And see the synchronized fireflies. So when does it happen? May? I think it's May. So I thought maybe in April we'll talk about this where people could more plan. But I just go see any fireflies are fun to watch. But the synchronized cool. thing seems so cool to me. That's very cool. You could have a little soundtrack going in your head. That would uh-huh. be fun. Yeah, because I think they do expect it to be, like, they don't want you. I don't think it's Disturbing super loud them. and disturbing. Yeah. 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 That's what I was saying. Like, <laughs> you're sure you have to be quiet. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. I have not heard of that. I would love to do that. Um, well, speaking of parks, parks are obviously a big mm-hmm. um, draw in the summer, especially. There are lots of free events that happen in, in the parks. parks. Absolutely. Especially the bigger city that you live near. Um, we are near Nashville and the Nashville Symphony, for instance. They do all kinds of free concerts in the park mm-hmm. during the summer. But even whatever city that you're in, parks are always doing like movies in the park yep, was- or just, you know, um, we have something mm-hmm. here called Touch a Truck. Yes. Which I don't think is just a Nashville thing. I think that's definitely all over. But, you know, they bring all the fire trucks out, police cars, mm-hmm. dump trucks, and just all the trucks so that boys and girls that just want to climb idea. on them, honk the horn. I mean, that is really cool. So that's usually in or near a park, um, usually sponsored by the yeah. you know, city government. But Yeah, I was going to say, so go to your city's website yeah. to see what kinds of things like that they have. Because yes. I, I looked up Touch a Truck, actually. Did you? Yeah. yeah, because, um, yeah, and it was the Franklin government's okay. site. So, yeah. yeah, whatever your city does, they'll likely have on their And that's website. free. You and know, it's free. And there's usually like a snow cone stand or something, so you may have to dish out a little for snacks, but definitely a fun 
family friendly too a bit. And maybe you even if it's a movie in the park or something, you make you know grab a pizza and go sit out there, and it's your dinner slash Absolutely. entertainment. Yeah, put together. Yeah, I love that. And picnics just in general, like I'm mentioning, getting a pizza. Absolutely. You can work so much around a picnic, yeah. which makes it not that expensive. Yeah. Um, like we have a vineyard not too far from us where you can bring a picnic. And yeah. it's just lovely environment. Yeah. There's some live music. Yeah. So maybe you even work your entertainment around yeah. mealtime where yeah. you're just outside. and Yeah. And even in, you know, I'm one that tries to think like this a lot. Who do you know that might be alone a lot or um, mm-hmm. needing to be around a friend? Picnic is such an easy thing to invite them to. And outside can do wonders for the brain uh, and the body. For, and <laughs> yeah, for picking up your spirit. Yeah. yeah. If so if you are talking about somebody that's having a hard time or hard day or hard season. Yeah. yeah. Just inviting them along to what you're already doing. That's is good. pretty easy. That's you know, lady, pretty yeah. easy thing to do. Yeah. Um, another one I was thinking of is the tis the season for county fairs. Yes, so absolutely. You know, your county likely has something close by that you yeah. could jump in, and those are usually in these months. Yeah, ahead. Yeah, July and August are a lot of the county fairs. I have down because I think you can get pretty cheap seats at a minor league baseball game. Yes, that's a I great think idea. There's still some. I don't know how. You know, everybody kind of has their own parameter as to what cheap is. I was in my mind trying to stay around. You know, ten ish dollars a person. Mm-hmm. So I think there's still something in that ballpark <laughs> um, that you could find, you know, in the the lawn area of a ballpark or the cheaper seats. Um, but minor league baseball is so, so fun. summer. The boys yeah. of summer. That's right. Yeah. I so love that, that idea. One I put on my list as well. Um, we've mentioned this before, but VBS happens a lot. Yes. I don't know. Some, you know, some of them are June and have passed, but um, vacation Bible school. Vacation Bible schools are great entertainment. Sometimes they feed them as well. And um, the children, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> the workers get the snacks too. <laughs> the same ones, according to John Christ. But um, anyway, that's an idea of entertainment or to volunteer. If you're yeah. part of a church that does one, that can be a fun yeah. thing for you, way to volunteer. And speaking of volunteering, that's a great thing to do for encouraging yourself and your own that's spirit. True. Is just, what would you want to volunteer for? Do yeah. you love animals? Then find a way to volunteer around animals. Yes. Do you love gardens? Find a way to yeah. cultivate that yeah. and, yeah. you know, helping the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Speaking of which, have you seen these like community gardens that are popping up? Mm-hmm. How cool some is that? Some cities do it. Some churches do it. Yeah. So growing food that can be given away to families in need. Yeah. Those awesome in need idea. that are, um, you know, receiving help from the church or from mm-hmm. the community, getting them something fresh. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love it. I do too. I've just seen a couple pop up around town and at first I was really confused. I was like, wait, so you just go get stuff? But it's usually pretty organized, you know, in yeah. terms of volunteers that are tending the garden and then those that are receiving the goods yeah. from it as well. But yeah. That well, just made let, me think my of friend that. Leslie made a comment one time and she said, you know, why do parks not have more fruit trees? Where the homeless could get the fruit. And I thought, why? I don't know. That's a great question. Maybe there is some reason. But doesn't that seem like parks should just be full of apple trees? Yes. And, um, I don't know. Because they're full of trees. Yeah. They're being planted in. No, I just thought, why have I never thought of that? And that's a fabulous idea. Maybe they take more tending or I don't protecting. Know what the deal or, is, I don't know. But anyway. That's interesting. Let's see. I think I only have maybe two more. Okay. Um, I've mentioned this on pr- previous episodes as well, but I'm a big proponent of the drive-in movie. Oh, yeah. And the way this stays so cheap is because you can bring your own snacks. Yeah. And depending on what movie or what drive-in you have near you, and they are going away. They so are. they are harder, harder and harder to find. to find. So you may have to spend some gas money to even get to one because <laughs> it may not be very, very close. But um, sometimes it's by the carload. 
not that's right you know not per person so right. if you've got a larger family this definitely works out because you can pay for one car load and bring a bunch of snacks and you're not sneaking anything in that's it's, right it's already allowed so that's a great idea there's tons of outdoor music in the summer yes. so i didn't have specific things other than just saying there's so much like we have a pizza place that does outdoor music yes um next to it like there's so much i don't know where to start cover but. bands galore beatles cover <laughs> bands that's right find some outdoor music yeah. there again bring a, a snack to eat or something that's and just enjoy idea. it being yeah. outside and listening to good that's good music fun. um Lots of uh, summer gardens that do special things. Like in Nashville, we have Cheekwood. And they oh, often have yeah. kids-specific events and adult events, yeah. like different things. Yeah. They'll have wine events where you can walk around with your wine and look at the gardens. They'll sometimes have kid things that are you know, okay, yeah. more geared for them. Yeah. But um, just... That's cool. Being outside in a beautiful setting that you didn't have to cultivate. Right. Like, wow, that's yeah. kind of fun. Yeah. I'm sensing a theme here. Free equals, or outside equals free. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why there's cheaper things to do in the summer is because we can all be outside that, more. It might be just exactly what it is. That's so funny. <laughs> well, one inside one, though, that I, I think also um, you can find inexpensive tickets is just supporting your local or children's theater. Oh, yeah. You know, sometimes... Even children's productions where all the cast are children. Yeah. They do some good ones. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same story, but all of the characters are children. Right. And um, so the tickets are usually not too expensive and... um, Actors in the making. That's right. That's supporting that. That's a great idea. That's about all. I mean, I was thinking splash pads yes especially for young kids that's free yeah, getting around usually. water again so yeah you don't yeah. have to go pay for the wave pool if they're young enough that a splash pad is awesome Little fountains will yeah. give them entertainment absolutely and yeah. um, so another thing i was thinking on that is free or inexpensive is just practicing cultivating hospitality by planning a neighborhood cookout or a potluck. I love it. Right? That's so, like everything we're about here. The house doesn't have to be perfectly clean. We're outside. Right. In fact, you do, could even do it in some location, like if you're, if you live in a neighborhood where there's cul de sac. Yeah. Like we're, like we're it, tailgating in the cul de sac yeah. or something, but like an outside. Or, yeah. Some pool time, right? Pools Have like neighborhood clubhouse yeah. or something, whatever. However you want to do it, but somebody's got to take the initiative. Yeah, people love to go to stuff like this, but somebody's got to take the initiative to make it happen. Yeah. So just even putting that together, where everybody brings something, yeah. you know, somebody's going to take charge of the grill and what's going to happen so there, good. yeah, and that kind of thing. I but love it. Getting people together, getting to know your neighbors, or yeah. What, Ever group you want to gather, um, I just think that's a that's great thing great to do. Idea. Yeah. And that also got me thinking: whatever happened to progressive dinners? I oh. loved that whole concept of like multiple going to multiple appetizers homes. at this house. Then we do salad at this house, and entree at this house, and dessert at this house, or whatever. Yeah. That used to, like, I used to hear about that, and I, I don't to, anymore. I used to hear about it, but I don't know if I've ever actually participated in one. I have. I can't say I've participated in many, but I actually brought this up to, in, at our church, we have three families that all live on the same, practically, street. Yeah. It's a tiny bit off, but I said to them, when the third family moved in, I was like, we have to do a progressive dinner. I well, um, that's funny you mentioned it, because I was going to ask you, of any of them that you've done before... We were driving from this one to this one to this one. It yeah. wasn't neighbors that I did But with. doesn't it feel like you'd really have to find people that were semi-near each other? Because you don't want to be driving a lot between courses. Or do you? Well, I don't know, because that really gives you time to maybe process, but it makes for a long night. So I guess you'd have to start early. Yeah. <laughs> like, 3 o'clock appetizers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that does add to the... But 
each place you're kind of getting like a little, you know how each home feels different? Like yeah. you're getting like a little taste of. Yeah. But it would be so cool to do with a neighborhood where, yeah. you know, you do one and then walk three houses down and do another and walk two houses that down. Sounds, like that would be really fun. And it, it, like we're talking here, it keeps the expense down. Right. right? Not one person is hosting and providing. The whole thing. Not just cooking, but the expenses that go into groceries. Right. Yeah. That's fun. So I just thought that would be a fun... Progressive dinner. And hospitality all mixed together. That's good. One thing I was going to mention when you mentioned the neighborhood gathering, Mm -hmm. our neighborhood has it in the fall every year. So if you can get something established, it's an annual thing. Absolutely. People know it's coming so they can, you know... Maybe keep their calendar a little open or start checking in with people like, hey, are we doing the July 4th or right. the Labor Day get together? Like, yeah. is that happening it's this year? It's almost like a given. Yeah. It's always going to be. Yeah. And that's a great thing to get established. But get it established, right? Get and the first annual one going this year. And whatever that might be. School kickoff, cookout, yeah. or whatever yeah. you want your thing to be. Yeah. That's fun. I like that idea. Well, we would be remiss if we didn't mention another great free thing to do in the South this time of year is a good fireworks display. Heck yeah. And they are um, coming in strong. The South is really... We love our fireworks. Bringing it up when it comes to big fireworks displays. Because it really was, and still, Boston and D.C. have big displays. And that's what you're going to see on... The national coverage, but Nashville's done. We've got big some displays. Big ones. Great music acts. Oh yeah, um, I've heard great displays happen in Birmingham. Savannah has a good display, and I just feel like all over the South, there's really a lot. Sometimes you'll even be at a um, you know waiting on one, and you see an awesome one in the sky I, just miles <laughs> up the road and it's like oh my gosh I just got to see whatever three that is so fireworks shows that. in one yes. night and we have some s- serious fireworks stands in the south I mean if you've done a road trip to Alabama <laughs> or Florida you have passed through some of these uh, stands right on the interstate. the interstate big daddies big fireworks. daddies <laughs> I can picture the painted Big Daddy in my head. Um, Or if you've seen a good country music video or two, a lot of them include fireworks stands stands. in the background. That's a big, big, it's big business around the South. It's big business. And it's funny, I met a lady who, that's what their family does is fireworks. Oh, wow. And I said, oh, I've never really thought about who's doing that as a business. And she said, yeah, so we have to be really good budgeters because we make all of our money two times a year, January and July. So feast and, you know, they got to, all the money's coming in in two two whatever weeks. So, Oh, my goodness. Being diligent with budgeting. Yeah. For 12 months. But it is big business. If you are using fireworks as your cheap thing to do for the summer always be careful it is illegal oh. in several areas too yeah. so make yeah. sure it's and just dangerous like yeah easy to injure yourself so be yeah. careful so make sure you're if you're shooting them off yourself they're not cheap so we're not saying that that's a cheap thing to do in the south no, we're saying true. go watch somebody else Let's shoot, them, shoot off. them off that's right um but we have so much to celebrate being we do um the birth of our nation and yes. all that it entails Yes, so we hope you enjoy letting freedom ring this summer, (laughs) and we hope you've um, gotten some fun ideas of things to do, and maybe we'll just have to go make ourselves some potato salad now. (laughs) That's right. I won't do another fireworks explosion to end. (laughs) All right, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of the podcast, and if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button so that you will be the first to get a notification when we have new episodes out each week. Hope y'all have a good one, and we'll see you here next time. Happy 4th!